Hi there, everyone. My name is Prerag Juthani. I'm an MD MBA student here at Yale, and today we are going to be going over all of the things you need to know for the 2023 AMCAS application cycle because it is May and it's AMCAS season. So, without further ado, let's get to it, and hopefully, this, t this answers all of your questions. Just trust me, every minute of this, I've tried to plan uh, to make sure you got the biggest bang for your buck. AMCAS 2023, um, the website, first of all, is going to be linked in the description below. All of the information that I'm getting today is from an AMCAS webinar that was jam-packed with a ton of information, so you're hearing it straight from the straight from the source. The submission is going to open on May 31st, but notice that the um, big dates are highlighted for you here. April 1st is when the AMCAS resources became available. May 3rd is when the AMCAS application itself opened, where you started, where you could now edit your activities, you can put in your meaningful experiences, you can add in your personal statement. But until May 31st, you will not be able to submit. May 31st is the first day you will be able to submit. And I will tell you right now, I did not submit on the first day. And to this very day, I almost regret it because it throws everything off. The earlier you submit, the better off you're going to be because Everything um, that is submitted is processed in that order. So if you submit late, you're going to get your application processed later. Um, so the problem is for medical schools to get your application, you need to not only submit it, but it needs to be processed. And oftentimes, the later you submit, the longer the processing time is, which delays it from getting to the medical schools, which delays potentially interviews, which then potentially delays acceptances because classes will already be full by the time you may even get an interview, right? One thing that you need to make sure is that you need to make sure you need to have your letters of recommendation and your transcripts by June 24th because that is when everything is going to be transmitted over. However, the other thing to remember is before you submit your AMCAS, and I'm telling you right now you should try to submit on May 31st, but before you submit it, you should have your transcript because if you submit it and your transcript is not there, that will ultimately delay the processing. You don't necessarily need to have all your letters of recommendation in by that day. You can actually submit your ERAS, um, submit your AMCAS without having all of your letters of recommendation in, but you cannot submit your AMCAS without having your transcript in. Um, and so make sure you have your transcript ready, and um, that will definitely facilitate the process. Here is some data taken directly from AMCAS that shows you the processing time based on when you submit. And so notice that people who submit earlier tend to have a shorter processing time because they submitted earlier. There's not as many people. The later you submit, the, the longer the processing time can become. And notice that this is actually 2021 that you're looking at in yellow. Sometimes the processing time can go down, but oftentimes it goes up. And when it goes up, trust me, look at the purple, look at the red. These are all different years. It usually goes up, and that can cause um, a delay in your application. So with all that being said, it means submit early because the earlier you submit, this is the average number of business days to complete verification. The chances of it being lower is um, likely if you submit earlier. And notice that if at any point you're past the June 24th date, med schools are already starting to receive applications. And so for every day post June 24th that your application is not verified, to a certain extent, you're kind of late and behind the game already. So you don't want to have that. Here are the uh, things that I was telling you about. You need to have your transcript in your AMCAS ready to go before you submit the AMCAS, which I would again tell you, you should do it on May 31st. But you don't need to have your letters of recommendation in because believe it or not, uh, again, the colors here, each color represented, represents a different year. But notice that uh, the y-axis is actually the number of letters that are received. Most applicants get all of their letters to their application received in June or July. You don't need to have all of them by May. It is great if you do. I highly recommend it. Fingers crossed for you. But if you don't, June or July is okay because you don't necessarily need all of your letters to submit and have your application processed and verified. So now let's talk a bit about cost. This is going to be an expensive process. And believe it or not, the, the AMCAS does have a um, supplemental fee waiver. So if you feel like you may be financially strained by this. There are certain cutoffs that you have to meet, but if you meet those, AMCAS does waive application fees. If you don't meet those, here's how much AMCAS costs. The actual processing of the application costs $170, and that includes one school that you can send your application to. From there on out, every additional school costs $43. So if you're like me, I applied to 30 schools, 
that means 170 and then 29 additional schools. So 170 plus 43 times 29, that ended up being around $1,500 just to apply to medical school. The average medical school applicant applies to 16 to 17 schools. However, I will tell you last year, the acceptance rate for anyone um, who applied through the AAMC AMCAS was around 40%. So to all that to say, you should try to apply to more schools than you think is necessary because it's getting very, very competitive. Here's what the AMCAS 2023 looks like in terms of the different application sections and um, the overall login. When you log in, you should see there's a letters of evaluation tab and also a transcript tab. You should make sure that the transcript is received prior to May 31st. The letters of evaluation, you don't need to have all of them in, but you should try to get those going. Use the Interfolio and have a video on how to upload your letters to Interfolio. I'll link it right up here so you can see that. Ideally, you want to also have all of these sections completed as well by, by May 31st. And as you submit each of these sections and they're completed, they're going to become uh, from, you know, orange to green and they'll say uh, complete. Um, here again are a ton of resources that I'm going to link in the description below and it will tell you everything you need to know if there's anything that is not answered in this video, which ideally there's not much, but if you have any other lingering questions, you can look at all of these um, resources, which I'm going to link in the description below. The last thing I'm going to tell you is if you're taking the MCAT and your MCAT score is going to come in um, between May to June, that MCAT score will automatically be tied into your application. You don't actually need to wait uh, to add it in manually. MCAT scores are automatically added to your MCAS unless you voided it. Um, and if you didn't void it, it will automatically be added, so you don't have to send them manually. It, and however many times you've taken the MCAT, assuming you have not voided your score, all of those scores will be added, and they're going to be added in this way, where they can uh, the applicant reviewers can see the score in each section, they can see the percentile scores, and they can also see your overall percentile score as well as the percentile score in each of the four subsections of the MCAT. Um, I will now end by telling you that if you do not already have a Twitter, you should get one. And I say that because the AAMC and AMCAS tweet out a lot of information. If you are uh, want to know like the biggest things that are happening or the most recent updates, I would strongly recommend you follow their Twitter because they tweet quite a lot and they have a lot of great information and this is often where I learn a lot of good stuff as well. So that's usually where you can go and at the very least if you have a big issue, sometimes if you DM they, they if you DM them on Twitter, they do respond. Uh, I have done that before and they have responded. So hopefully this gave you a good 360 degree overview of everything you need to know. If you have any additional questions, a ton of resources will be linked in the description below and uh, Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and see you all in the next one. Peace.